when we're going to first of all be discussing straight out of Compton the movie tonight and when you told me that we would be talking about this I decided to watch the film again you know just to refresh my memory even though I've seen it you know two or three times all the way through um but yeah let's uh, let's get it going man I have a few questions and hopefully everybody else in the comments uh, have some questions as well but uh first question for you Lance a lot of movies are you know put into development purgatory for years you know when was the first time you heard any rumblings about an NWA movie Man, I've been hearing I've been hearing about it for a while. There were uh, another dude. Um, he had um, consulted with Jerry and uh, even myself for a minute about the project. Uh, he was actually a writer on the actual movie itself. Can't think of his name right now. Damn it, his his name slips, slips in my mind for the time being. But uh, there were some issues with the music, and that's what slowed everything told everything down. Tamika wasn't, she wasn't budging on, um, on what she was dealing with. And uh, till they got her approval, it wasn't gonna happen. Yeah, explain that to everybody, how you have to get approval from whoever owns the music. And Tamika Wright obviously owns Ruthless Records, so any music right. that goes in the movie, she would have to approve of, right? When you, uh, somebody owns the music and you wanna do a, a biopic like that, the original masters are very important. I mean, uh, you got to have the actual song. You just can't have somebody else doing Easy E, doing uh, NWA stuff. You know, you got to have the people that was actually doing it, doing it. And those masters were controlled by uh, Tamika. And at the time, for whatever reason, maybe the money wasn't right. I'm not sure, but they were. She wasn't cooperating, to my knowledge. Allegedly, she wasn't cop. Allegedly, she wasn't cooperating. And uh, that slowed the process down tremendously. And there was even, I think there was even an issue about Jerry's involvement. Uh, uh, you know, so it was just a lot of problems. Um, and this guy's name, um, this guy's name comes, I see his face. Is it Bill, Bill something? No. no. It was the original guy who, who wanted to write the movie and get it going, but then Tamika, okay. I'll look it up while we're talking. I'll look it up. I do that. Because cool. I've heard that story myself. Um, but yeah, speaking of Tamika Wright, um, did did you? We obviously know what we hear about her, but did you ever meet her? Do you did you have a relationship with her? I met her a couple of times in passing, man. You know, I uh, you know we didn't really have a relationship. We, I just met her in passing. How you doing, it's Easy's wife? How you doing? Blah blah blah. And uh, we had uh, I think me and my partners had a meeting with her um, about some distribution we were trying to do uh, with our company, West Coast Record Distributors. And it didn't pan out, so that was pretty much it. I saw her at the movie set. She knows who I am. I know who she is, but we don't. We don't really talk. Okay. Well, before his death, uh, you, you mentioned Jerry Heller earlier. Before his death, uh, he went on record saying that he was inaccurately portrayed in the movie, and he even went as far as to sue. I don't know yeah. where they are to this day, but um, as someone who knew Jerry Heller very well. Did they accurately portray Jerry Heller correctly and straight out of Compton? Um, you know, to a certain degree, I got to say about 80% was Jerry Heller, okay? About 80%. Um, he was an over-the-top kind of guy. You ever see um, 48 Hours? I love that. With Eddie Murphy and uh, Nick Nolte? Yeah, Eddie Murphy and, movie. and the oh, folks. One of my favorites. Um, Jerry would remind me of both the uh, Danny Aiello's character, the, the cop, and also the mob boss. He reminded me of both of them, okay? Because sometimes he would be super cool. You know, he'd want to talk, joke around. And all of a sudden, he'd get real serious, and he'd, you know, start hollering and screaming and shit. And like, dude, I'm not the one for that. So, you know, he would, you know, he was he was known for that kind of shit. And then, then he, he, he'd come down and apologize or, you know. Uh, but he was, you know, he, he just, he reminded me of those two characters combined. You know? Yeah, Homeboy did a great, I think he did a really good job. I mean, I, I don't know Jerry personally, but I like the actor who portrayed him, and he kept me entertained is all I'll say. I don't know if that's exactly, like I said, what Jerry was like, but he definitely kept me entertained. He did a, I think he did a good job of portraying him also. Um, I think sometimes, some of the things that might have been a little bit over the top, and some things I think was accurate. As far as Jerry always um, having a cooler head when he came down and doing street shit. He was definitely that dude. Um, you know, shit, street shit was always in a possibility. 
And he came from an era where street shit was very common practice. You know, he came from a whole nother era of serious, real serious uh, gangsters. Um, and well, yeah, what do you play. know about that? What do you huh? know about that? I've never, what do you know about Jerry's background? Well, he, 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 he used to invite me over to tell me gangster stories sometimes, man. Really? Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, he always, you know, he always tell me about these guys in New York, these uh, different guys he worked with and how this guy did this and how I got, that guy did that and guys that I knew that I, I came in, I'd come in contact with don't ride in the car with this dude. You know, this guy, last guy had his job was found in various pieces around New Jersey, shit like that, man. I'm like, okay, cool. Thank you for the info, you know? Um, and you know, and when when you are from the hood and you used to certain type of uh gangster shit, when somebody tells you about cars blowing up and shit like that, you kind of take that shit, you know, um, uh, for real. And I just chose not to, uh, you know, be a part of that shit. That's all, man. It's just mm -hmm. one thing, you know, and it, people tell you certain things could come from certain people's mouth. You got to take it uh, for what it is and, you know, either make a choice, either hang out or keep pushing. And I put, I kept, I kept pushing. Before we jump back into the movie, when was the last time you actually saw and talked to Jerry Heller? Oh, uh, man, maybe uh, about a year before he died. Okay. He talked to him about the lawsuit. He wasn't happy with it and uh, some other stuff. And... Uh, I explained to him, you know, I said, man, it was a, it's a, it's a movie. Well, I like the way he did me, you know, and, and that's something that I noticed. Uh, he was very protective of his, his image. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he always said he never got sued. He never got, I've never been sued. And many people I've screwed, I've, I've been accused of screwing. And I never, ever got sued. Well, you can't get sued if you sign the contract. Okay. Yeah. If you agree to this on the contract and realize later on this was a bad deal, you know, so be it. Okay. What, what, you know, nobody gives a damn. Okay. And that's pretty much the, the, the scenario. Somebody gives you a contract, one of the biggest fuck you contracts in the world is a credit card contract. Okay. Right. Yeah. If you got a credit card, they have the right to fuck you everywhere but Tuesday, every, every day of the week. Okay. But, you know, they raise you can raise your interest rates. They can charge you a little amount of money for late fees. But nobody reads all that shit. All you see is that $5,000, $3,000 limit. And you're thinking about going shopping. It's the same It's the same thing. Yeah. You get a credit card. You get a high, a high balance credit card. And you think about the possible freedom, not the possible debt you're going to be in. So it's the same thing with a, um, with a contract. You see that big number. Forget the other words. What's the number say? Okay. And people will sign their lives away on that for that first page. Meanwhile, the other thirty nine pages is putting some on your ass. You'll never get your kids will never get out of, and that's always been the issue. And me and me and one of my buddies, good buddy of mine, had a debate. Argue. We should have told them kids. No, they were not kids. They were eighteen. They were eighteen. Okay, they were over eighteen. So if you over eighteen years old and don't take the take the time to um, read a contract or have somebody read it and know what they're doing, then that's on you. You signed it blindly, that's on you. Excuse me. And I've been in that situation several times. I mean, I, I give you all my publishing. I, no, 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 no. See, different with Lonzo. Lonzo still lives in the same house. Mm -hmm. Jerry lived in the gated community. You had guards and shit. You had guards on one side and mountains on the other. Okay, you were not getting in there. You weren't getting in there. Okay, unless you had a helicopter. Okay, or somebody knew, you knew the passcode. And um, so you know, I work out of my house. I've always worked out of my house. My studio's here, so I have to maintain a certain decor, certain attitude, because this is where I live at. And the certain things I'm not going to do because I work out of my house. And you know, when you have an office and nobody knows you live at. You can pretty much do what you want to. They're going to see you on your business hours from nine to five, just like mm -hmm. Big Red. They're gonna, only going to see you on your business hours, okay? Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, that makes a big difference. Yeah, yeah. What up, folks? We got folks in the chat room. I'm going to shout out to right quick. What's up, uh, Derek Valerie, Agent Black, uh, Gary on Butch watching the Hit My uh, Mob Hit documentary today, damn sure. Was blowing up car. That's right, dude. So when people start telling you about certain things, man, what's up, Juanita? You got to take you got to take that shit for real, okay? 